All right, so we just went through that whole bit on electron configuration. And one of the reasons to go through all that really is to kind of set us up to talking about these valence electrons. Um, valence electrons are going to be like the most important electrons we talk about. So the definition of a valence electron are going is, is that they, the valence electrons are the one in the outermost shell, which is also referred to as the valence shell. So if we look at the examples here, so if you look at beryllium, right, it, beryllium has two electrons in the 1s um, orbital or subshell. So actually the 1s subshell would be the correct way to say that. And in the, out here in 2s, there's also two electrons. Well, remember, these numbers, 1 and 2, refer to the shell. So the outermost shell for beryllium is 2. How many total electrons are in the second shell? 2. So we would say beryllium has two valence electrons. Coming over here to chlorine, doing the same thing, we can see the outermost shell is going to be three. The total number of valence electrons in chlorine is going to be seven because there's two of electrons here in 3s and five in 3p. So one of the common mistakes people make is they'll look at chlorine and they'll say, okay, it's going to have five valence electrons. They just go all the way to the p electrons. You can't forget the s electrons as well. Um, so in terms of Another way to look at that, so looking at the periodic table, um, you can also kind of figure out the number of a valence electrons really by just looking at the group in the periodic table. So I mentioned um, in a previous video in this chapter that elements in the same group have the same chemical properties. And the reason is because they, also, they all have similar number of valence electrons. So anything in the same group, with the exception of helium, is always going to have the same number of valence electrons. The group number, if you use the 1a to 8a method of naming the groups, the number of that group is going to equal the number of valence electrons. So if you look at anything in group 1a, right, it's going to have one valence electron, hydrogen, lithium, sodium. Anything in 2a, beryllium or magnesium, is going to have two valence electrons. Anything in 3A, boron or aluminum, is going to have three valence electrons. So on and so forth, all the way across until you get over to 8A. And again, helium is the one exception to the rule because it only has two electrons. You can't say helium has eight valence electrons when it only has two total electrons. Um, let me actually whoops, um, look at this periodic table here just a minute. We'll come and do this problem in just a second. Um, in terms of the valence electrons, so again, anything here in group 7a, and I just wanted to show it this way in terms of seeing the whole periodic table in general, but here's group 7a, so these are our halogens. These are all going to have seven valence electrons, six, five, four, three. We kind of skip over the transition metals to get to two and then one. So again, eight all the way on the right and then counting down going across to the left, or you could start on the left and count up going all the way across to the right. All right, so that brings me to um, electron dot symbols. So the reason we talk about electron dot symbols is we're going to help use these dot symbols whenever we talk about forming of chemical bonds, which is going to come up in the next chapter. So dots represent electrons, and specifically valence electrons. So if you were to look at the electron dot symbol for hydrogen, you write the elemental symbol, which is H for hydrogen, and you would say hydrogen has one valence electron. So you put a dot next to it. Now, it doesn't matter where you have that dot. Hydrogen can look like that with a dot above it. Hydrogen can look like that with a dot to the left of it. Hydrogen can look like that with a dot below it. Those are all acceptable electron dot symbols for hydrogen. Now for carbon, it has four valence electrons. This is the only way you can write the electron dot symbol for carbon. Because if you read this bullet point here, for one to four valence electrons, single dots are going to be used. And then whenever you have four valence electrons, the dots become paired. So for carbon, it's important that we don't pair any of the dots, right? So the only way you can draw those four electrons is to put one on each side of the carbon. For oxygen, right, with six valence electrons, right, it's going to have two paired and two 
unpaired electrons. Now, you could draw that actually a couple different ways. You could draw it like this, and then the pair is there. So again, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as there's two pairs and two unpaired ones. For chlorine with seven, there's going to be one lone guy and then three pairs. And kind of uh, some foreshadowing here, right? Whenever we talk about forming of chemical bonds, um, whenever you look at these valence dot symbols, any electron that's all by itself, those are going to be, be the ones that form bonds. So, for instance, for oxygen, we're going to talk about it over and over again during the semester. Oxygen is going to form two bonds, and it's going to have these two lone pairs. Carbon is always going to form four bonds because it has these four lone electrons that can all form bonds. Chlorine and any other halogen is going to form one bond, and then it's going to have the lone pairs. Hydrogens can only form one bond with that one electron they have. So again, this is why these electron dot symbols are going to be useful as we move forward. So what is the electron dot symbol for sodium? We come over here and find sodium. We see it's in group 1, which means it has a total of one valence electron. So we would write sodium and we would put a dot on it. And again, it doesn't matter if the dot goes above, below, to the right, or to the left. It doesn't matter. For sulfur, we find sulfur on the periodic table. And we say, okay, sulfur has six valence electrons, right, because it's in group 6A, so six valence electrons. So sulfur, we count the dots. One, two, three, four. Then we need to do two more. Now we can start pairing them, and I'll draw it like that. So whether we draw sulfur, we could exchange that for oxygen or selenium, right? Anything in group 6A is going to have the same configuration. You just change the symbol in the middle. Similarly for sodium, whether we can draw sodium that way, lithium, hydrogen, potassium, rubidium, they would all look the same. It's just a different symbol.